good afternoon. We have a bit of a problem with our PA uh, system, so we're trying to fix it. But at this point, <coughs> it's not uh, working. Um, all right, good morning. Um, this morning, the Secretary General spoke at the Peace Bell Ceremony ahead of the, tomorrow's International Day of Peace. This year's theme is Climate Action for Peace. The Secretary General said that peace is not just the absence of war, it is about respect, tolerance, and thriving societies in which people live in harmony with each other and with the environment. He said that uh, competition for resources is creating tensions between peoples and countries and natural disasters are displacing millions. Raising ambition and taking climate action is crucial if we are to live in a peace and build a world of resilience and prosperity for all, he said adding that this is why he has convened the Climate Action Summit that will take place on Monday. And on that note, the program for the summit uh, is now available online uh, for the Climate Summit, including the speakers list, and has been, sent, uh, has been sent out to you by email as well. The Secretary General also spoke to students this morning and told them their leadership is essential so that his generation does the right thing. I count on you, he added. All UN staff will take part in their own way in the climate gathering at 1.15 p.m. in the Visitors Plaza, where they'll reaffirm their support for the Secretary General's efforts to accelerate climate change. Also on a GA note, um, I have an update for you on the numbers of heads of states uh, who are ex uh, and others who are expected to participate in uh, the General Assembly that, takes, uh, that starts officially on Tuesday, uh, today the count is 91 heads of state, six vice presidents, 45 heads of government, five deputy prime ministers, 44 ministers, two chairs of delegation, three observers, and that's the same total as we had at the end of last week, which is 100, uh, 196. The number of meetings requested has now climbed to 630. Also, on a related note, uh, starting at 7.30 uh, p.m. this evening, uh, if you look at the uh, General Assembly building and the Secretariat buildings, you will see an, an immersive show called Voices of the Future, Antarctica. While you were sleeping, that lights up our building in advance of the Climate uh, Action Summit. The projections will last until 10 p.m. This installation will spotlight large-scale projections covering the outside of the UN with images of massive icebergs, setting the scene for the voices of six young advocates, including Swedish student activist Greta Thornburg, who, we are, who, who are commenting on the nature of the climate crisis and what must be done to minimize the consequences of climate change. I think it's a rather spectacular show. I encourage you to see it. And we thank our friends at the Permanent Mission of New Zealand who are sponsoring this light show. Uh, and I also just to flag that obviously our office will be open and staffed uh, throughout the weekend, both Saturday and Sunday, given all the events that are going on. We will not be briefing. Uh, also, because of all the other events going on uh, at the beginning of next week, uh, we will not uh, have noon briefings on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday unless otherwise necessary. Is that okay with you, Sherwin? I'm not sure it is. Okay. All right. Well, you can file your complaint. Um, uh, and we'll be distributing, uh, in as much as we can, advance embargo copies of the Secretary General's various speeches as they become available to us. Uh, back here, Nikolai Mladenov, the special coordinator for the Middle East peace process, briefed Security Council this morning on the situation between Israel and Palestine as required uh, by, of the Secretariat under Resolution 2234. Mr. Mladenov noted the expansion of illegal Israeli settlements in the occupied West Bank, including East Jerusalem, continues unabated. He asserted that such expansion must cease immediately and completely, and he reiterated the Secretary General's concern over statements regarding the annexation of the Jordan Valley and the Dead Sea. Sorry? Yeah. Oh, my, my apologies. Uh, thank you. Thank you for paying attention, most importantly. Um, Mr. Blanoff unequivocally condemned all attacks on Palestinians and Israeli civilians, including settler-related violence, and called on all sides to refrain from violence and to clearly and unequivocally condemn attacks as they occur, as perpetrators must be held to account for their crimes, he said. He added, as we approach three years since the passing of the resolution, we can only lament the worsening situation on the ground. His comments are available to you. Uh, on Mali, our colleagues from the peacekeeping mission there say they are concerned by the new wave of intercommunal violence 
affecting people in some of Timbuktu's neighborhoods. The mission is supporting the response by the Malian security forces with coordinated action involving UN police and peacekeepers. They're also working with Malian authorities to ease the tensions. The mission calls for an immediate cessation of hostilities and condemns all acts of violence. Turning to the Democratic Republic of the Congo, the UN is alarmed by an increase in violence committed against civilians in the eastern provinces of Ituri and South Kivu. Dozens of villages have been burnt, and, we have and as we have reported to you, at least 250,000 people have been displaced over the past few months. In other worrisome development, the UN peacekeeping mission said they have had at least six night attacks against civilians in the past two weeks in Ituri's Jugu territory. Displaced people, including women and children, have been among those targeted. According uh, to data collected by the UN, close to 200 civilians have been killed in Ituri since June. Gang rape and other forms of sexual violence have been largely reported as well. The mission is actively supporting the provincial authorities to restore calm and calls on all community leaders to support these efforts. Humanitarian agencies are also mobilizing to address the needs of people. The 2019 Humanitarian Response Plan for the DRC seeks $1.65 billion to target 9 million people in need of assistance and protection. It is only 30 percent funded. And UNHCR said today it is deeply concerned about the recurring violence against foreign nationals, including refugees and asylum seekers in South Africa. In, uh, the agency is working closely with the government and other UN agencies to, uh, and other partners to ensure the safety of refugees by deploying additional staff, emergency shelter and other supplies, psychosocial care and legal assistance. Um, UNHCR calls on all state authorities to take every possible measure to ensure people's safety and welfare. No effort should be spared to quell the violence and enforce the rule of law. It is also stressed that those responsible for committing criminal acts must be held to account in court. And in Venezuela, our colleagues at the UN Children's Fund tell us they're providing more than 300,000 children with back-to-school kits to help them in school. The deteriorating situation on the ground has also left an estimated 1 million children out of school. Over the coming 12 months, UNICEF, in tandem with national partners, plans to reach a total of 1.2 million children in public and subsidized schools across Venezuela with various educational supplies. Each back-to-school kit contain, uh, contains a school bag holding essential learning supplies, including a notebook, pencils, and coloring uh, pencils. UNICEF is also working to expand educational services to ensure inclusive access and quality learning for all Venezuelan children and to prevent dropouts. Um, and our colleagues in the Office of Migration say so far this year 63,000 migrants and refugees have entered Europe by sea. That's according to new data compiled by the agency. They note that almost 30,000, or almost half of the yearly total number of people, have arrived in the past nine weeks. Four out of five migrants or refugees enter Europe through Greece or Spain, with others arriving mostly through Cyprus, Malta, and Italy. In related news, IOM condemned yesterday's death of a Sudanese migrant in Libya. The man was shot hours after having been returned to shore by the Libyan Coast Guard. And the World Food Program tells us that in August, they reached a record 12.4 million food insecure people in Yemen with food assistance, which is the highest number they have reached so far in the country. WFP says it needs $600 million to ensure uninterrupted food assistance for the, past six, for the next six months until February 2020. Without more funding, WFP will have no choice but to reduce food rations to families starting in October. Um, and... Uh, just, uh, what do I have more to you? Uh, in a short while, I will be joined by David Nanopoulos, the chief of the treaty section in the Office of Legal Affairs. He will brief you on the annual treaty event uh, that always takes place during the General Assembly. And um, this, week's, this year's treaty event is devoted to the promotion of the 17 SDGs through multilateral treaty framework. And lastly, today we thank our friends in Praia for full payment of the 2019 budget, taking us to a total number of 126 countries. Um, what, what, I just said 126, that's not the question. The question is, Praia is the capital of which member state? I'll I have all day. 
Capo Verde. Oh. Ah, all right, all right. Oh, go ahead, Sherwin, <laughs> yes. Steph, thanks so much. Um, the Cuban mission to the United Nations is uh, calling the expulsion of two of its diplomats a violation of the UN headquarters agreement. Have they reached out to the United Nations? What say you about this move by the United States just ahead of GA? Yes. Uh, sorry, bear with me two seconds. I knew it was Capo Verde. Uh, sorry, it's uh, this is a serious matter. Uh, yes, we have seen the announcement by the U.S. government uh, of its decision to request two members of the permanent mission of Cuba uh, to the U.N. to leave the country and the imposition of travel restrictions on all members of the mission. I can confirm to you that the U.S. mission uh, to the U.N. informed the Secretary today of that decision and uh, of the fact that they had taken this decision under Section 13B of the UN-US Headquarters Agreement. Uh, given the sensitivity of the issue, we will not comment further at this stage, other than uh, confirm that we'll be closely following the matter. Uh, I would add that the Headquarters Agreement is a public document. We have copies of it if you want to consult that particular section. So no point in a follow-up then? Exactly. Um, yes, Celia. One of the, the main uh, questions is, of course, is, this is an investigation that is done by the United States. And, and so uh, what, what, what do you refer to? Oh, yes, okay, sorry. He, I'll do a follow-up. <laughs> we all need but, uh, yeah. but, but, uh, we have heard a little about what it actually happened. Um, but could this become an issue during the meetings that we will have next week in the United Nations? We understand that the um, foreign minister of uh, Cuba is the one that is going to be addressing mm -hmm. the G Assembly. Um, he has reacted, and he's very, very forceful about it. The mission has made in a statement. Um, would this become an issue? Um, because it's always been questioned the role of the United States as a host country uh, when it comes to not just uh, giving um, the you know visas and all mm -hmm. this, but um, would could this be a concern for for um, the Secretary General? Look, I, I, there, first of all, um, the U.S. United States is one of a number of countries that is host to UN headquarters. So there are standard procedures in place and treaties uh, and agreements in place with all the other headquarters uh, duty station. This is not the first time it's happened. There is a procedure. Uh, and obviously, if there are issues that, need, that member states themselves want to raise, uh, that can be done through the host country uh, committee as part of the General Assembly. Uh, obviously, what impact that will have on Cuba's uh, presence at the UN, I, that's a question for the Cuban mission. Yes, sir. Yes. Let's see. Hi, Steph. Um, the meeting for Turkey and uh, Iran and Russia mm -hmm. about Idlib, the, the they, they inform the UN about what's going on. Yes, and I think the the Secretary General, um, the Secretary General spoke about it uh, during the the press conference. Obviously, there was progress on the issue of the Constitutional Committee, which we are uh, pleased with, and we hope that will be finalized uh, very shortly. But we were briefed. Um, thank you, One staff. Second. A couple of questions, mm -hmm. or maybe a few more. Uh, <laughs> Do you have anything on the SG's meeting with the Turkish foreign minister today and also anything on Mr. Peterson's uh, UN Special Envoy for Syria, his upcoming visit to Damascus on Monday? And uh, President Trump is hosting also an event on the religious freedom on the same day as the climate summit. Will the SG attend there? And one more question, do you have any concerns that the climate summit would be overshadowed? Okay, uh, let's take them in the order that I remember them. Um, the Secretary General did meet uh, with the Turkish Foreign Minister this morning. Three broad issues uh, came up, uh, Syria, uh, Cyprus, and the Alliance of Civilization, which uh, we are thankful for the Turkish government's uh, support of. Um, on, uh, on Syria, I, I think they, they discussed the situation, the, 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 what we hope will be the soon the completion of the Constitutional Committee, what the Secretary General has already uh, told you. Mr. Pedersen um, obviously will go, from what we understand, will be going to for consultations in Damascus. 
that's an important step in that process. We will, we will see what comes out of that, but um, we hope that will be positive news. Uh, on, uh, on Cyprus, I think the Secretary General reiterated the points he really made to you publicly, is that he will have uh, meetings uh, during the General Assembly, uh, during which Cyprus, Cyprus issue will, will come up. His, his goal, his ambition for the Secretary General is to help create the conditions that could lead to the resumption of talks, and he's also looking forward to meeting all the, all the concerned uh, parties. Uh, yes, sorry, the, the, the other one. Uh, yes, the Secretary General will speak um, at the uh, meeting organized uh, by the United States on religious uh, freedom on Monday. Um, no, I, you know, I'm not concerned or see it as an effort to, to overshadow the, the climate summit. I mean, you've all covered General Assemblies in the past. You know that uh, during the General Assembly, there are often many important meetings going on uh, at the same time. This is what we do during this week. Uh, we obviously, we've accommodated and glad to accommodate the United States in this request. At the same time, the, we very much look forward uh, to the climate um, the climate meeting. The Secretary General will open it. Uh, and as mentioned, you have, the, you have now the, uh, the speakers list, and you will see that it's quite of an impressive show of climate leadership. Yes, sir. Uh, Simon Ateba from Today News Africa, Washington, D.C. Uh, Cameroon seems to be in a real mess now. The president has been in power for 40 years, and the Anglophone crisis has left so many people dead and hundreds of thousands displaced to Nigeria. President Paul Bia of Cameroon is going to be here at this UN General Assembly. Is there anything the UN is doing to put pressure on him to bring lasting peace to his country? First question, last question. Nigeria is also in a real mess. Uh, a lot of political activists are right now detained. We have journalists in jail, we have politicians in jail, and President Buhari is coming to the General Assembly. Is there anything the UN is? Well, I mean, on Nigeria, the Secretary General will obviously have uh, will have a readout. We'll have a conversation with. Uh, looks forward to having a meeting with President Buhari. A number of issues will be discussed on Cameroon. I, you know, um, we look forward to these discussions. The Secretary General has. Uh, expressed his concern about the situation in the Anglophone uh, areas. Uh, we have pushed for dialogue. We also know that the High Commissioner for Human Rights especially went to Cameroon, and we fully support the work that she's doing. And we also have quite a big humanitarian presence there. Abdel Hamid. Thank you, uh, Mr. F First, is there any update on the visa for President Rouhani and his. Friend. I mean, I, I only know what I've seen in the press, which I understand is that they were they were granted. We have not been involved at this point. Okay. Of, think, On the 26th, sure. there is ministerial meeting for UNRWA. <coughs> would the SG be attending this meeting and would he speak? If yes, he the Secretary General will speak. I mean, the, the Secretary General has been a tremendous advocate for UNRWA, for the work that UNRWA does every day. Uh, in the various areas in which it operates. He's a strong believer that UNRWA is a force for stability in a region uh, that is perhaps not as stable as we would like it to be, to, to, for a slight understatement. But would um, Yerk the Commissioner General, I, I don't, I don't, I don't know. But I know the Secretary General will be there to represent uh, the United Nations and to show his personal commitment uh, to UNRWA and his call for member states uh, to support UNRWA's work with the financial resources that it needs to make sure that clinics stay open and that children can go to school and learn. Signora. I'm sorry, Steph, but I have to follow up. Don't be sorry. <laughs> be happy. The Cuban Minister of Foreign Affairs and the Cuban Mission say that the expulsion of two diplomats and the greater restriction of movement of the rest are aimed at provoking a diplomatic escalation leading to the closure of bilateral embassies, further tightening the blockade and creating tensions between the two countries. Does the Secretary General have any comment on that? Could you? Look, I, I think this is, uh, this is an issue that we're obviously following very closely. We've been informed by the United States. I will have to check if uh, our colleagues in the Secretary and the Legal Affairs Office have also been in, been in touch uh, with the Cuban uh, mission. We're always open to, to meeting. Uh, there are uh, rules that govern 
the hosting of the United Nations in the United States, as there are rules that govern the hosting of the United Nations in Geneva, in Nairobi, and, and Vienna. There are treaties that need to be uh, observed. If there are issues, those can also should you know can be brought up through the host country uh, committee of the General Assembly. Sir, and then. Good afternoon, staff. Let's go into West Africa. Um, over the weekend, the uh, organization of West African States, ECOWAS, they pledged $1 billion to fight terrorism in the West African region. Um, what is the Secretary General's reaction to this, and will he um, use the, any MINUSMA troops to work jointly with ECOWAS for this problem? Well, we, we obviously uh, support the effort of ECOWAS. We welcome uh, this pledge. The Secretary General has been calling for greater support to those states, notably the, the so-called G5 Sahel states, uh, that are fighting uh, various extremist groups. Uh, he believes that those forces should receive predictable funding and, it's, and, and support, which is very, very important. Um, the UN will work uh, in, in Mali, where it has troops uh, with, uh, with the local authorities. But it is important to, to state that the, the mandate of the uh, UN peacekeepers is not a counterterrorism operation. Uh, they have a very specific mandate. They have, however, borne the brunt of um, uh, of some of the violence. I mean, the, the civilians have borne the brunt, but they have been hit. Our peacekeeping colleagues have been hit very hard. And as you know, I think that mission has the highest rate of fatalities uh, from the hands of extremist groups in, of any peacekeeping mission. Yes, sir. Thanks, Stefan. Um, also regarding the expulsion of the Cuban diplomats, uh, you told us the U.S. was in communication with the U.N. on this matter. Did the U.S. communicate to the U.N. specifically which actions the diplomats took, which the U.S. considered violations, or just the section of the U.S.-U.N. agreement 13B? I'm, I'm just aware of what I've been uh, told, that it was focused on the, uh, on the, on section, on the section that I, I think section 13B. Uh, if other things were discussed, it's, I, could be or could not be, I'm just not, not aware. Yeah, one question and then we'll go to our guest. Uh, you, talk, you talked about the uh, uh, violence in South Africa mm -hmm. um, against refugees. Mm -hmm. Would you by any chance know uh, from which countries the refugees are coming from? Who well, are we, we, uh, we can try to get a breakdown. We know that there are refugees from, uh, there are refugees from a number of countries, including, I think, uh, Zimbabwe, but we can put you in touch with our colleagues at the UN Refugee Agency. Great. If I could, uh, yes, one last question and then. Yes, uh, we, we know that climate change is a big issue now, <laughs> and we also know that President Trump doesn't believe in climate change. Uh, is there, how far can the UN go without the US on board? Thank I think the, the Secretary General has been very clear on this. I think we have been engaged in the US with the business community, with various uh, states. And I think we are, we've seen, um, we, we will continue to stay engaged with U.S. authorities at various levels on this. Great. I will get our, our guests. Thank you.